We're Trent and Allie, and it's official. Our four-way inspection is happening. Ah! After months of hard work, we are so close to this major milestone. We're out of pipe insulation. No! And we bought the wrong size. No! Yeah. <laughs> we have a couple things to finish up. Frank, will you insulate the pipes and put on the nail plates for me? <laughs> and then we'll be ready to put this build to the test. I'm not gonna say we're gonna pass, but we're this close <laughs> to having the inspection take place. We're not gonna pass, but that's okay. <laughs> Beautiful day in the neighborhood. I was so tired. Why? The puppy slept all night long. So did I, and I still want to <laughs> keep sleeping. <laughs> this thing where he really wants to lick the inside of Lika's mouth. It's disgusting, but at least they're getting along well together. Frank wants to lick the inside of everyone's mouth. <laughs> You're the only one that lets him know. I'm the only one that allows it. <laughs> oh. It's nice, whenever we go do errands in the valley, uh, Trent's grandma is super sweet and asks us to always drop off our laundry. And then she folds it for us and puts it in this little cardboard box. This also stems from just trying to use my grandma's washer and dryer. And she <laughs> lacks the trust in us to let us use her washer and dryer. She will not let us use her washer and dryer. She's watching this. She will only <laughs> do the laundry for us. And we love that. It's awesome. We love you, Grandma. And thank you for the clean laundry. I'm going to put our laundry away this morning. And then we have some pretty exciting updates. Kevin was here a couple days ago, and he thinks that right now, if we scheduled a four-way inspection, we would fail. We're definitely going to fail anyways. Great. <laughs> Just keeping it real. <laughs> Kevin gave us a shopping list. Uh, we've got a handful of things that we need to do. I think we can finish most of them in this video, maybe the next video, but I also think in the next video, we're gonna try to schedule our four-way inspection and maybe get it done. We got our work cut out for us today and tomorrow. Brandon should be here in a minute, and then we're heading to Home Depot. <sighs> All right, we're ready to go we're on a family outing. We got Lika, we got Frank, we got Brandon. Ready. <laughs> Are we there yet, Dad? <laughs> Let's just put it plainly, Brandon and I are not pipe fitters. We're not plumbers and we're over here in the gas section trying to figure out how to plug all of the gas lines and get the gauge that goes on the gas line so that we can pump it up and make sure it holds pressure for the inspection. We've got an assortment of parts here and we think most of it's going to work. The good news is all these parts are like two bucks. So if we get the wrong ones, we can bring them back, but also it'll probably cost us like five or six bucks in extra cost. I think we've got everything we need. We're gonna head down and get some pipe insulation, and then we're out of here.
our quick trip to Home Depot was very successful. We actually don't need to go to Ferguson's. They had everything here. Let's head back to the house. We got to get all of this stuff installed. Probably not going to get it done by the end of the day, but maybe tomorrow. And if that's the case, then we can call for four-way. Come on, Lika, let's go. Let's go, Lika, let's go. Put your back legs on come there. On. What are you doing? You can come do on. it. Come on, come on. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Lika. She almost made it. She was like eating treats off the very top. Oh, she'll get there. And then she's like, ah! <laughs> Frank, will you insulate the pipes and put on the nail plates for me? <laughs> is that a good Frank boy? I've always thought that Frank's voice is like a New York gangster. And he's got like this deep, raspy smoker voice. And he's like, yeah, only if I can get a quick pizza first. Yeah, he's a fat Italian New Yorker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think Brandon and I are probably just going to get to work. I think the first thing we're going to start doing is we're going to start putting on this pipe insulation. 72 feet of pipe insulation, and I think that's gonna be enough to cover it. We're gonna go downstairs, we're gonna get to work, and we're gonna find out if we have enough. Hello. How's it going? Great. Oh, we're out of pipe insulation. No. And we bought the wrong size. No! Yeah. <laughs> I'm just using it anyways. Ugh. And if they say that I can't use it, then I'll get the right stuff. But they were like pretty much out of three quarter pipe insulation. Mm -hmm. So the rubberized stuff that I got is for one inch copper and three quarter iron pipe. So it's mm -hmm. a little too big, but it like sticks and seals. And so there is a little bit of air gap in there, but uh, you know, we're going to see if that works. Hopefully they're okay with it. Also, we basically just ran out of the rubber eyes, which is half of the pipe insulation that we have. Oh my gosh. And we still have to do a piece that goes from here all the way to the wall, and then everything upstairs. Probably don't have enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but 72 feet, it was all they had of the three quarter, the two oh, different really? types. So we did our best, but we may be moving on to a different project pretty soon. Yes, I just used a sawzall to cut through foam. <laughs> Don't judge me. It is nice because a lot of these spaces were so tight that our hot and our cold lines ended up like having a little bit of pressure against each other. And so this pipe insulation will just ensure that you don't like turn on the cold water and get a little spurt of warm water. Interesting. Because that would be devastating. <laughs> Also, while we're here, I wanted to address one thing, and that's the fact that a lot of people were concerned that since we're putting plumbing in an exterior wall, that it's probably going to freeze in the wintertime. Now, keep in mind, there will be 140 degree water running through this pipe constantly, which means this pipe right here will also be probably 140 degrees. So this cold line being right next to a pipe that's 140 degrees while it's all encased in insulation will most likely stop this pipe from freezing. Then we're gonna have three inches of exterior insulation on the outside of the house and then siding. So basically uh, it's probably not going to freeze. I just cannot get over these guys. Is that the cutest thing you've ever seen? It makes my heart so happy. It is so cute. <laughs> Either Frank has just given up or Frank is in love with Lika and we think that Frank is in love. So a lot of people commented on this and I absolutely need to do it. So I'm gonna put this pipe is blue, 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 huh. blue, blue, blue. Blue of a D of a die? Um, blue, 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 blue. That's just so, you know, if like something happens and they have to tear out some tile or sheetrock or something in the future, or they're trying to replace a, a broken water line, if they pull this apart and they see this section, they don't think it's a hot line. They, they can see that this pipe is blue.
these that I'm putting on here are called nail plates or nailers or nail stoppers. There's a lot of different names. Anyways, they're basically just a little piece of sheet metal that you hammer in or screw in and it goes anywhere that you have wires or pipes going through a structural member because what's going to happen is they're going to come and they're going to stick big or we're going to come <laughs> we're going to stick big sheets of plywood here or big sheets of sheetrock and then once the sheetrock is there all you know is where the studs are so you just start screwing into the studs and if you don't have this you will most likely end up sending a screw through a drain line a water line or an electrical line so these are a great invention and they're actually code. You have to have them. So as long as your wires or your pipes are more than two inches away from the surface, you don't have to have one. But in a two by four wall, you basically need them on both sides. I think the rest of the wires are further than two inches in, so we don't need to put the nail plates on them. The only thing that we need to do now is basically at the very bottom of the wall, so like right here. You need to put one of these on the bottom plate here, but then because you normally put like your baseboards there and you'll shoot a nail into the top of the baseboard, you need to have these be at least three inches tall. So these are an inch and a half, and you can double these up, boop, boop, but there's nothing for this side to mount on, so we'd have to go and like basically mount little studs or little scrap pieces that would catch the other side of that. Or I can try and go find these that are three inches tall. And I think that's what I need to do. Take your anger out. Whack him in place. It's just uh, like we're not going to sheetrock the utility room and we're not going to sheetrock the basement, like even for inspection, and we'll like, finish it later. But I don't know if they're going to like want me to put nail plates everywhere that there should be nail plates in case you do end up putting sheetrock in the future. Like I just mm -hmm. don't know exactly what they're going to expect. So. Yeah. Just one of those things where an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of salt. Salt, not <laughs> Over this. <laughs> I don't want to hit these stupid plates in anymore. Uh, I think I've successfully installed all the ones that we need to put in except for after we fur this wall out, which I know there's a lot of people saying, Trent, I tried to tell you to do a two by six wall and there's plumbing in it. And you were right, you should have done a two by six wall. <laughs> and we didn't, and it's causing a lot of problems right now. But we're basically furring this wall out to be pretty much a two by six wall by the time we're done. And uh, we learned our lesson, so there you go. Brandon has left for the day and we got quite a bit done. We got pretty much all of the pipe insulation done except for like the two pieces that were missing. And we started furring out this wall. We got probably about a third of it furred out so that it's bumped out to basically be a two by six wall. I know we should have made it a two by six wall. We didn't and I regret it now. Um, I've moved two of the electrical boxes out. We need to move one more out and finish furring up that wall. And then we need to get a lot of nail plates that I didn't get. We need the three inch, the really thick nail plates. We need like 50 of them. And then we need, however that number was, of the short guys again. 3,000. 3,000 more plates. And hopefully we can get that done tomorrow. And then all we've got to do is wire the smoke alarms. The drop down ceiling needs to be furred out. We need to do a couple more breakers. We got a couple more days worth of stuff to do before we can call for four away. But I think today has come to an end. We'll see you guys in the morning.
What's up guys and good morning. Before we get started today, we are actually gonna start off having a delicious breakfast and it's brought to you by Magic Spoon and Magic Spoon is the sponsor of today's video. Magic Spoon is a healthy alternative to sugary cereals and contains no grains, gluten, soy, or artificial flavors. It satisfies your sweet tooth and makes for the perfect healthy yet delicious meal any time of day. And honestly, they kind of make you like feel like a kid again. They remind you of the cereals that you used to eat as a kid. You even get little games to do on the back of them. It's just, it's nice and nostalgic. You can choose from best-selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, blueberry, and peanut butter flavors, plus brand new flavors that just dropped, including cinnamon. I used to have a favorite flavor, which was fruity, but now that Magic Spoon has come out with some newer flavors, peanut butter is absolutely my jam. So if you guys are looking for a protein-packed, low-carb, zero-sugar breakfast cereal, I highly recommend Magic Spoon. I absolutely love this cereal. And if you guys want to try it right now, if you click the link in our description and use our code, you can build your own variety box from Magic Spoon and you get five bucks off. Thanks again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video. Now I'm going to eat this, get dressed, and we're going to go get to work. All right, so even though I got filled up this morning on Magic Spoon, the other day I went shopping, and it's just a bad idea if you ever let me go shopping. So I got this large assortment of pastries. So even though I am pretty full, I'm still having a little cream cheese pastry before I head inside. Now we have some really exciting updates. First, today for us is actually Friday. I know it's Monday for you guys, but today is actually Friday, and on Wednesday, our four-way inspection is happening. Ah! which means we have today and Monday and Tuesday to get all of the things done that need to be done for the four-way. Now we have a small list of things. We're gonna try and get as many of them done as we can today. Also, it's 45, almost 46 degrees right now. The high today is like 70. There's still two feet of snow outside. It's supposed to be like 70 for the next three days. So we are gonna be working in a giant mud pit. There's <laughs> puddles of water everywhere. Things are melting way too fast. We're gonna try not to focus on that. We're gonna go ahead and get to work today. Let's get going. You know it since the winter fell and you've just been biding your time. I won't ask no questions, I'll back down. Cause I got time and I am wasting mine. Maybe someday I'll wait for Someday I'll look past all the reasons and wrong turns I took. Someday what are you worried about? Well, there's no stud to put the second nail plate in. So the first one goes right there, and then the second one, you'd have to like cut little scab pieces of two by four every time you needed to put one of those in. So I just figure if I double up these tie plates and nail them in place, it should serve the same purpose, but the inspector will decide. I dare you run a little faster One step, you are on your way now Embrace all your weakness Therein lies the secret The water's never gonna drain out It all goes by so slowly Ooh. This is the first day this entire year we are not starting a fire because it is nice and warm in here. I'm almost too hot in a hoodie. We're getting to work. We have a lot to do before the inspection. And it's a gorgeous day. Now let the river flow deep into the ocean all the time. Did you order a puppy training pouch off of Amazon? No, you did. No? Yeah. This is the problem with having Amazon on your phone and one touch purchases is Trent makes all these impulsive decisions. I didn't buy that. I've never even looked at one. I don't even know what it is. I just saw that it was in our Amazon purchase history. Someone else is logged into our Amazon purchases? I don't know. It wasn't me. I find it hard to believe it wasn't you. It definitely wasn't me. Huh. I promise. Do you believe him? Because... I, mean, I would like to have one. Well, we have one now. <laughs> so we've been getting a lot of questions about these little whoopee cushions, these little bags that are attached to every window. 
And basically these windows are triple pane and they're filled with argon gas, which uh, really prevents a lot of heat loss through your windows. And what happens is they manufacture these windows in Colorado at a little bit of a higher altitude. And if they don't install these bags that allow the gas to expand and contract inside the window, when they ship them to sea level or when they ship them up in elevation, once they get to the job site, if they've already been sealed, usually the, the uh, atmospheric pressure change will either compress or bulge the window panes, and then you'll get a weird distorted look. So they put these whoopee cushions on there so that you can actually let the windows acclimate to your temperature and your atmospheric pressure, and then you can crimp the line, you seal it, and then you stuff it inside the weather stripping, and your windows are good to go. We've been worried to do this all winter because it's been so cold that we didn't want to like crimp them and then have it get hot and like have the gas expand like massively and have the windows be bulged. So we're like median uh, seasonal temperature now and we're at our altitude for a long time. So I'm gonna start cutting these off. Also another question that we've been getting a lot is how do you spell Lika's name? And it's L-I-K-A. <laughs> Scary. I know, that's what I was saying to Brandon is like, I don't really know if they're like leaking. I know that like when I'm crimping it, that the bags are staying sealed. Okay. So like when I cut it, it's like crimping it enough to do this, but who knows if the windows are leaking. And... Is that the recommended way to seal off the wire? Yeah. Okay. So just to crimp it in three places, cut it, and then dip it in sealant. Okay. So I'm using Max strength construction adhesive, clear <laughs> by Gorilla Glue. <laughs> I hear that makes really good hair gel. It does, yeah. <laughs> In case you guys are wondering. So one of the things Kevin called out is that we need to have a hardwired smoke detector on every level of the house. It can't just be battery powered. And so now Trent is back up in my favorite place at the very top of the scaffolding. Trying to make that happen. I think in theory this smoke detector should service the entire house, but we're going to put one in the kitchen as well. One in the basement and then one in the sunroom. And then we just have to tie those together, run a cable down to the main uh, breaker panel, and we're done with that. It just sucks because we got to get the tall ladder in here, we got to run wires along all the double top plates and down everywhere. And we already did this once, so <laughs> we got to do it again. Yeah. You never break, you never lie, you never ever scared of the dark. So why am I the one who cries? I'm so afraid to be left behind. I think about you a lot. It's almost like I can't stop. I can't stop. Yeah, yeah. You never lose an argument. So I've been trying hard to pretend that I'm okay. It's just a phase. Everything is going just great I think about you a lot It's almost like I can't stop Can't stop Yeah, yeah I always knew that this would happen Yeah You would find a new distress. Words I never thought I'd ever say I'm gonna pass Trent the strippers right now Good catch my linemen's as pliers out of uh, many recommendations for or from people and a lot of you guys are probably saying no Trent I said to hold the staples with pliers and then hit it with the hammer but these are actually like thick and heavy enough and <laughs> you've been using your linemen's work. as pliers I think you mean as a hammer you know what I mean <laughs> Hello? Hello. 
gonna shove wire through this hole. Okay. And I want you to pull it until it comes to like your knee. On it. Stuff like this just melts my heart. Look at this little girl. And this little boy. But enough of that. We gotta get back to work. So the name of the game today has been put your head down and grind. Been trying really hard to get this done. There's basically maybe 10 or 15 of these left that need to be put on. We got the smoke alarms uh, all wired up. I need to put them into the panel, but they're at least wired. Um, Brandon is finishing up doing our fur down in the top of the basement over here. It looks fabulous. Uh, I got all the propane lines capped off. I'm just like running around like a chicken with my head cut off. We're getting yeah, there. I'm exhausted. That's all I really have to say. You're doing so good. 2 a.m. in the car playing my favorite song. Turn it up, windows down, we sing along. The summer night has just begun. What a day. I know, we got so much done. We did get we did get quite a bit done. Yeah. We even got a treat pouch. I swear I didn't buy it. You bought it. I swear I didn't. Well, Scout's on her. I didn't buy it. Oh, I didn't buy it either. <laughs> I don't know. You'd think that like someone bought it for us maybe, but it was you like in our Amazon it. account. I swear I didn't buy it. <laughs> I promise on all these delicious cinnamon rolls. You buy everything, see? I bought those for sure. <laughs> well, I don't know if you guys enjoyed coming along on today's adventure. We had an absolute blast and we are making incredible headway. We are this close to getting our four-way inspection. I'm not gonna say we're gonna pass, but we're this close to having the inspection take place. We're not gonna pass, but that's okay. <laughs> Maybe not the first time, but probably the second time. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed coming along. If you guys did, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you have not already. Thanks again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video. Click the link in our description to check them out. And we'll see you guys on the next Adios. one. Adios. Oh. So we are uh, just trying to clear something up really quick. We're looking into our order history and it looks like neither Allie nor I bought the treat pouch. <laughs> and I don't think it had a gift receipt, so thank you for whoever bought the treat pouch. I'm going to use it with pride. This is everything.